Evening folks and welcome to this review of my 1965 Universal Geneve pole router. So it's a quick wrist shot there. Um, the name comes from its commissioning by Scandinavian Air Services for a watch capable of withstanding the concentrated magnetic fields that you get when flying from Scandinavia to the US via the North Pole or the Polar Route as it's called. And you can just see on the case back here uh, this globe and you can see the polar route going over the top there. Um, and if you want to fly that polar route today, I understand that the Emirates flight from Dubai to Los Angeles goes by the North Pole in a, in a four-engined Airbus A380. So something to try. Um, I'd love to do that myself. So this classic pole router shape uh, was designed by Gerald Genter, who also designed many other iconic watches, including the Patek Philippe Nautilus, the AP Royal Oak and uh, the Omega Pi Pan Constellation, amongst others. Um, and back in the day, Forbes rated Universal Geneve as a brand up there with Rolex and IWC and definitely a step above the likes of Omega and Longines. However, the quartz crisis of the sort of 70s and 80s wasn't very kind to Universal Geneve and uh, their marketing and product strategies proved unsuccessful. Um, so they are still actually a company, a registered company, but they don't make any watches under the Universal Geneve brand, which is a shame. We can hope they might do so in the future because they've got some really classic models and a good reputation amongst uh, collectors. Anyway, the signature design flourish of this particular one, you've got the crosshair on the dial, um, but it's the beautiful chapter ring. That's what um, I really love about this watch, my favourite part of the watch. And photos never do it justice. You just need to see it moving in the light and see how the facets are either shiny or dark and the textures that you get in the very finely gray grained um, lines in between the indices there. So uh, it really, it's like my day date in that respect when the designer has got to use the same materials, this one it's steel, um, same material for the hands and dials and case, um, then they have to use it lots of different textures to differentiate the parts of the watch and it gives a great visual depth I think and richness to the design and to the look of the watch. So there is a date version of this which has got a date window at three o'clock, a lovely trapezoidal date window um, but it's not a quick set date on these um, pole rotors and I didn't want to add another non-quick set date watch to my collection because otherwise I spend all the time setting the date or I don't bother wearing a watch that I really like just because in a hurry to leave so I, I went for the non-date version of this. Um, so most pole routers apart from some of the earliest ones um, you have Universal Geneve's iconic micro rotor movement so this one's got steel back you can't see it but this is another pole router which I've done a video on previously and this one has got a display back so it's the same movement inside this watch um, but you can see a picture of it there and um, the rotor is the bit that winds an automatic watch and normally it's on the back of the watch and it adds, adds an extra bit of thickness to the movement but this one the rotor is actually inside the main movement and um, it makes it allows them to make a thinner movement um, and it's nicely decorated it is an in-house movement um, and yes yeah, the Geneva stripes on there and the gold lettering and the rubies um, definitely a step above other contemporary watches of the time from the likes of Rolex or Omega um, so this particular model has also got uh, it's got a Universal Geneve sign crown, um, and uh, along with you know still having the inscription on the back readable. Um, quite often when you're finding these vintage ones, they've either got non-original crown. I mean I'm not saying this is original, but at least it's um, got the Universal Geneve logo on it. Um, and also the they, the case backs do seem to wear, but this one you can still see the serial number, the model number just up there. Um, as well as that inscription. Um, the lug width is an unusual 19 millimetres, um, which is something to look out for um, when you're trying to buy a watch strap or indeed a bracelet. And I have actually found a bracelet in my watch collection that fits it, um, which is one from a 36 millimetre Omega Aquaterra Quartz. So I'm going to pop that on and show you a picture of that. So here it is on my Omega Aquaterra 
bracelet and unfortunately the um, these end links are a bit thicker and they don't line up with the um, the twisted lugs there um, but uh, nevertheless it does fit I, I was amazed that the lug holes uh, lined up with the bracelet actually um, I do like a bracelet watch um, but I do think I'm so used to seeing the um, Paul routers with leather straps that I'm probably going to stick with that for this watch um, but it's a nice experiment to try anyway anyway thank you very much as ever for watching I hope you enjoy this one and see you soon